I'm Liz and welcome to another episode of Spin to Knit. In this series we follow a whole project from start to finish or from fluff to finished object. If you are new here, welcome. I hope you stick around and subscribe to the channel. But if you've been here before, you know what to expect. So settle in for another fun episode. The pattern I've chosen for this month's episode is the Alaska hat. I'll pop all the details on the screen. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this pattern. I love it. It's beautiful. Uh, however, I've knitted it a couple of times and I've failed both times. It hasn't stopped me thinking about it though and trying to find yarns for that amazing like sunset gradient in the background. I've just never come across the right yarn. For me, this is one of the best things about spinning because I can't buy the yarn I want, but I can spin it. So that's what we're going to be doing in this episode. For the fibre for this project, I got in touch with Debs, who is the fibre fairy. She's also known as Crafty Cat Nitty Bits on Instagram. Now, I've spun up quite a few of her hand-painted braids before, and they are amazing, her gradients especially. I'll put some details about her on the screen, but do go and check out her folksy shop, because honestly, her fibre is amazing. Um, but yeah, I got in touch with her and said, I have a project in mind. Do you fancy dyeing me some sunset fibre? And she, she was all for it, it was brilliant. We decided that because this is project as a hat and I only really need 50 grams of each colour, that she would dye a 100 gram braid with both the colours I would need on. So it was going to be half a sunset and half our dark contrast colour. Now I'll put some pictures on the screen of the two braids that Debs dyed up for me. There was one with the navy dark colour and one with the dark brown. The dark brown is most like the original pattern picture that I sent her and I was really tempted to go for this one but I couldn't stop thinking about those pinks and purples and oranges in the top one so I eventually decided to go with the navy that's what I'm spinning today fiber prep for this is going to be really simple I just want a two ply so I'm just going to literally split them down the middle and then spin end to end on two bobbins and ply them. The only thing I will do when it comes to plying is if the colours don't quite match up when I get to the end of the navy I will bracelet ply the last little bit just so that, that navy doesn't bleed into the sunset colours which we don't want it to do. I'm going to be spinning this on Mary, my Ashford Traveller. I have her set up on a medium whirl with quite a light tension. But yeah, it's time to get spinning. So the fibre that I'm going to be using for this is from Debs at Crafty Cat Fibre and it is a Falkland and this was dyed specifically for me, specifically for this project. However, if you love this fibre, do get in touch with her. I'm sure she'd be more than happy to dye up some for you as well. Now, Debs is brilliant at dyeing gradients. So Debs managed to get the main colour and the contrast on one braid which is amazing. So the plan with this fibre is to break it here, split both pieces into two and spin a two ply and that will leave me with this beautiful navy. This will leave me with two 50 gram skeins, one of this beautiful navy blue and the other of this sunset gradient in which to knit the Alaska hat. So let's get on to fibre prep and undo. doesn't want to break apart. Oh, we'll give it some welly. There we go.
that's our fibre prepped. I am just going to give it away. Just, uh, I am just going to weigh it just to make sure that we are pretty much even. So I've got 19 grams there and 19 grams there. That's a good split. And then here we have 32 grams and 37 grams so I'm just going to take a little bit off this one also it may be that I don't have quite enough of the main colour because that's not quite a 50 pretty split but Debs did say that when she was dyeing these up but I don't think I'm going to knit a folded over brim I think I'm just going to knit a straight brim. So.
Naughty cats have been playing with my fibre. It's all fluffy. struggling a bit during the spin for this she was knocking quite a bit and she really is not happy plying 
Um, I think I'm going to change over to my Ashford Kiwi. It's empty at the moment, so I can use that to ply. Um, yeah, she, she's not going to have this. Um,
So here we have the finished yarn for the Alaska hat. It was such a lovely spin, but it was a very fast spin. So I've got a fairly consistent spin throughout. I wasn't 100% even on the colours. There is some parts where they're sort of bleeding into each other, but that's absolutely fine. It's um, just going to add to that blend effect of that sunset, which is just going to look so nice. Yeah, I'm really excited to cast this on. I'm sure you can probably tell. Um, yardage wise, I'm a little tight on yardage of the navy. I only have a 150 yards, but I have an idea. I'm going to, instead of knitting the ribbing first, I'm going to provisionally cast on and knit the colour work part of the hat first and then go back and knit the ribbing. And if I don't have enough of the navy left, I can either knit a shorter brim or I can um, use some commercial navy yarn for the brim or I could spin up something else for it. I've got some navy merino that would work absolutely fine. But yeah very excited to cast this on which is what i'm going to do right now so it's cast on time for the alaska hat and look at these yarns aren't they glorious so i'm going to do a provisional cast on so i do that with the crochet chain method. So I've just got some cotton yarn, this is the usual sort of crochet cotton that I use, um, and I'm just gonna make a big chain. It doesn't matter really how long your chain is, as long as it is longer than the amount of stitches that you require. Okay, I should have put absolutely plenty there. Um, and then what I do, so I don't lose which end is the end that will unravel, I pull the loop like that and then I cut and then all that three I tie in a knot. So that way I know when I come to undo my provisional cast on which is the end to start undoing because it's different from this end. This end is just one string, this end is three. And we're going to be picking up in the navy. This is your front of your crochet stitch, it's this V here. But at the back, there is a loop that connects them. And this is what you're going to pick up. This loop here. So yeah, I'm just going to carry on like that. sunset gradients coming in quite a bit. I'm knitting this sort of inside out so 
the right side is on the inside and the back side is on the outside um, and it doesn't like doing that it keeps trying to twist around but by doing that it means my floats are naturally made a little bit longer because they're on the outside of the circle rather than on the inside of a circle. I am also using we'll focus the ladder back jacquard technique on places where there are long floats continuously because um, obviously the trees are triangular so the bits in between the trees will stay in the sky colour so if I put the ladder back stitches in there they're not going to be disrupted but there are places where there are longer floats in like the tree line where I've just I've just swatched my colours like just double stranded but yeah it's very very addictive to knit I was just knitting on it a little bit last night and I've already over half the way through the colour chart ooh that looks like there's something wrong there nope no it's right it also looks like nothing until you get past the um, major portion of the colour work chart because it's just a lot of bits until it's like it's like something being blurry and then going into focus when you see the the shape of it but yeah it's lovely so far I'm doing absolutely fine for the navy I don't think I'm going to run out and I think I should have more than enough for the brim um, and I'm only just starting to go into the orange in the sunset but yeah, it's it's such a glorious fit and I've already decided that as I don't have anything really on the spinning wheel at the moment I'm going to spin up the other braid of colourway that I got from Debs um, and knit another one. Yeah, I've only got about six rows left of the colour work. And then it's just knit, knit, knit. I think this idea of um, doing the provisional cast on has worked really well because um, I think the previous times I've knit this, the fact that you have to do 400 miles of 2x2 two two rib before you start the lovely colour work um, puts you off. But this way you're able to. Um, do the lovely colour work, finish the hat and then pick up the ribbing and knit as much ribbing as you want and I think that's a really good idea. So yeah, you can see on the back the ladder back jacquard colour work technique in certain areas it makes it really nice and stretchy and then I've done stranded in others where there's not so long, long floats and it's a really good practice to get into if you've tried the ladder back jack jacquard technique. I did a bit of a tutorial for it in the first first spin to knit video, the um, oak hollow bits. Yeah, but you can just sort of plug it into a pattern wherever it has big gaps. Oh, we've lost a puka, but now we have a Jax's butt. Look at that spotty bum.
when it comes to finishing off these ladder back stitches you just knit them together with the stitch that is next to them not before them Clean it to the ladder back stitch and then just knit it together with that and then that just sort of twists it so it's not it's not visible. I just realised I can actually be taking out my stitch markers. Woo! But yeah, the colour work is finished. Which is sad but very enjoyable. I, last first time I knit this, I swear it took me weeks to knit. And I started it last night and I finished it this morning. Admittedly, I still have a lot more hat to knit. I've got to get all the way up to the top and then pick up and do all that ribbing, but um, that is fine. There is quite... I mean, there's loads. There's loads of the navy left. I'm going to get loads of ribbing out of that. Maybe not. I can't remember whether it's like four inches that the pattern requires. Maybe not that, but enough. It really does look like a sunset because it's there's just the way the yarn blends. It's so beautiful. I don't know if you can see, but the gauge is maybe a touch on the loose side. And if I'd swatched, which who swatches? I probably would have gone down needle size, but I am going to knit this again. I have the other braid, so I will go down a needle size on that one. That is the colour work finished. I haven't quite got into the pink, so I've just got the yellow and the orange. Hopefully I'll get to some of the pink. Uh, the pattern gives you about another six or seven rows to do after the colour work before you start doing decreases and it says the decreases are quite sharp decreases. So yeah I think I'm going to go a little bit longer just because it's only about five inches long so far. I'm just going to keep knitting round and round and um, maybe get it to about seven inches before I start doing the decreases with them being quite sharp. And then I'll get a bit more of the colour gradation in it as well which I think will be really pretty. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a bit uneven at the moment because obviously colour work needs blocking, hand spun yarn. So I'm really pleased with it. So time to pick up this provisional cast on, which should technically be easy, but let's face it, never usually is. I undo the knot that I know is the knot. And then I pull the cut end and it should start to unravel. Fingers crossed everyone. Oop, we got one stitch. Now this cotton shouldn't stick to this woolly wool, but I think it's going to.
another spin net episode and here is our finished Alaska hat isn't it beautiful so much it's just a sunset it makes me so happy oh I'm I really really love it this was such a fun project it was quite a speedy project as well actually the spinning was all done in a day and then another day to ply and then basically just two days to knit the hat so in theory you could spin and knit this in less than a week it did take me slightly longer um, but yeah this is our finished Alaska hat oh, I'm so 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 pleased with it it is slightly too big for me it's the finished hat it's just a little bit too slouchy on me but that is fine I'm gonna knit myself another one in the other braid that Deb's dyed up um, and I'm just gonna go down a needle size on that one just so it fits but as the first two versions of this hat that I knit wouldn't get on a, a baby's head so the fact that it's too big is just brilliant. That just goes to prove that, that those colour work techniques really do help. The knitting it inside out and the ladder batcher card, really brilliant technique. This colour gradient though, the praise for that goes completely to Debs who is the Fibre Fairy. Um, I mentioned her at the beginning but I will put up her details again now. Um, do go check out her folksy shop, she has the most amazing fibres. Um, and yeah, if you get there before me, just make sure there's some left because I'm going shopping after this. But yeah, that is it for today. As always, remember to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and leave us a like and a comment. Let me know what you're spinning or what you're knitting. And if you would like to support this podcast, I do actually have a Ko-fi page. Um, I'm sure you can imagine these episodes take a long time to create. We're following the project from start to finish. And um, I have lots in the pipeline as well. These are going to keep coming every month. This channel isn't monetized, so um, I do it because I enjoy it and I really want to share those projects with you. But obviously, if you want to help contribute, you can do. And the Kofi account is on the screen here. To be fair, you're really just going to help me buy more spinning wheels because I have my eyes on an Ashford Elizabeth that I just really want it. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you at the end of June for the next Spin to Knit video and I will see you in a week or so for my next Yarn Waffle podcast. Goodbye my friends. Bye!